Okay, so this tomato is already getting a little unruly. All I'm going to do is come in here. And yes, it's got a lot of flowers, but that's not going to be a problem. The problem that I find I have with, with uh, you know, supporting tomatoes and, and cleaning, uh, cleaning out all that extra foliage is that that foliage really protects the fruit. Uh, especially in the, this is very intense heat, uh, very intense sun here in North Texas. And um, I don't really, I mean, the last couple of years that I've done this, I, uh, I ended up with, with a lot of sunburned fruit. So we're going to see, uh, I'm growing in a different bed now uh, as opposed to the one back there that gets probably several more hours of sun back there. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking if I'm going to continue to try to grow my tomatoes up, I'm definitely gonna do it uh, in this bed where it gets some afternoon shade. Okay, I've decided it's probably better to use a, a nice sharp knife. I'm gonna come in here again. I've got another sucker. If you guys can see that down here, I'm gonna pop that guy off and boom. Now, let's, uh, let's look at this guy. And this is why I'm about to get in here bed not completely hold on okay so if we're looking at some our tomatoes that last one you can see the internodal distance this is the different distance between nodes is here and that's about an inch and a half that's not too bad it's telling me that that plant's getting plenty of sun whereas you have this guy this has got about three and a half inches of internodal distance. That's telling me that it's shaded out and I need to get those cilantro out of that bed. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and root this guy all the same. I'm trying not to cut my damn thumb. <laughs> Okay, so that's actually a much better representation of how you want to trim up your, your suckers if you're going to root them. So, we've got all this. I may leave one um, just to save for seed, but I've really got a lot of other things in here that I prefer to, uh, to get off to a better start. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Wow. That actually feels like, like as if it were a, a cable wire or something. Jeez. Just some stout stuff. Oh. Yeah, so you can already see a pretty significant difference right there. I still need to get that other one from the other side of the bed. This bed, I did not put a lot of thought into when I built it. Um, I built it uh, five feet uh, by 10, uh, and that's mainly just to eliminate drop. I don't like being wasteful. Cedar, so I just cut one in half, made the end pieces, and then um, run the, the 10 foots. Um, and yeah, I'm, I've got long arms, so I could reach both sides, like every, you know, I can reach the center from both sides. What I didn't take into consideration is I can't get on that side. <laughs> There's only about 10 inches from that fence to uh, the edge of the bed. And I definitely wasn't taking into consideration having these cattle panel uh, trellises, but um, I, can still, I can still get in here. I'm not afraid. I don't have any problem walking on the, the soil in here. Uh, it's just, you know, you don't want to step on your plants. Well, I probably wouldn't go with a four foot bed, but I would definitely put it somewhere where I could access both sides. But, you know, hindsight's 20-20. So this soil in this bed, I've composted here. I've, you know, I've applied compost. I haven't actually built a compost pile on this bed, but that will be something that happens soon enough. Um, 
I actually purchased some premium uh, soil mix. It's, it's a, a premium topsoil. I got it at my local nursery, so I do not suggest you go out and buy the cheap stuff that you find at your big box stores. That you know, dollar nineteen a bag uh, type stuff. I think it's like three quarters of a square cubic foot. Yeah, I think three quarters of a cubic foot. Um, I actually bought that stuff, a bag of it, four or five years ago, and I, I just used it to fill a hole next to a bed. Uh, and then I popped two tomatoes in the corners of that bed. They grew and grew and grew. Uh, I did get them a, a little bit late, so I figured, okay, maybe it's just too hot for them. Uh, even in fall, they never, they never flowered. Um, so I pulled them out. And lo and behold, root out nem nematodes all over the roots. Uh, and I know the, the nematodes did not come from my soil. Uh, root nut nematodes can't exist in this heavy clay. Uh, maybe it's the heat, I don't know. I, I know they have them down in uh, Florida a lot, sandy soils. So, um, so that we don't get them here. So that almost guaranteed to have come in on that bag of, uh, of cheap topsoil. But like I said, this is premium top soil. I only use only use two bags in a 50, uh, 50 foot square, uh, 50 square foot bed, and uh, I mean that, that allowed me to grow carrots, which I'd never grown in in ground. Um, I do probably need to add a little bit of fertilizer over here, uh, just something organic. I'll probably see what I can find as far as a uh, uh, kind of heavier nitrogen. I tend to use quite a bit of back guano. We hear got a pathetic looking pepper, leeks. All this stuff is getting shaded out and I can't grow much if you don't optimize your sun. Speaking of sun. Hi Dominic, if you're watching, I love you. I love you, my baby boy. My son's probably my biggest fan. And my cousin. What's up, Mike? Big hey, Mike. Uh, actually, I think that's a leak. So I'm going to leave that. Alright. All that stuff going in the compost. Sad time of year when the spinach is done. I typically grow spinach all winter no problem these actually got planted uh just before the storm they were still uh just kind of leading when the uh storm How about it got some really nice looking tomatoes these are my favorite tomatoes guys purple cherokee i haven't had any in a couple of years uh, because I just didn't have any seeds and to me uh, you know making an order to Beggar Creek for one pack of seeds is just kind of silly so and I had plenty of everything else let's get the bottom of this guy cleaned up I don't like these leaves uh, being touching the soil okay all right hopefully you guys don't fall over I'm just taking the bottom leaves. I won't take any uh, above the fruit. But that's definitely going to help with some airflow. I'm getting some of these weeds out of here. I've got some leeks planted in with this tomato just to see if it doesn't confuse the hornworms. So, so far that kale and clay has worked pretty well on my citrus as far as getting them out uh, without getting the uh, the trunks burned uh, or the leaves when, when they grow indoors. Uh, if they put on much new growth inside, then you have to harvest, uh, harden them off again as you, uh... uh, there's something going on there. Um, jeez. But... Anyway, so yeah, I've, I've sprayed the trunks of my citrus, um, and 
my stone fruits. Now, so far, I'm not seeing any pests on my stone fruits. I'm not seeing any signs of pests. Uh, and you can barely tell I've even sprayed. So, I might have actually... And I, I've got bags on others because I'm not willing to just leave it all up to the kale. And I want some peaches off this thing this year. But we'll have to see how well that works as far as the pest uh, control. It definitely helps uh, protect from the sun. So um, I'll continue to use it and, uh, and really see. See, I'm getting some flagging. This is why the mosquitoes are so freaking nuts right now. We've had almost three inches of rain in about a week. And that's not, I mean, I know that doesn't sound like much, but okay, I say in about a week, it was actually in the span of about three days. So that's not normal at all. So let me show you guys real quick. I've got so much more stuff that needs to go on ground and I don't have space for it. I ended up with about half of that back bed back there. Um, that just, you know, the, the Bermuda grass is still extremely aggressive and I've got it tarped again. So yeah, I planned on having quite a bit more space, at least, you know, another hundred square foot back there that I don't, uh, don't want to uncover. So anyway, that surround that's what's protecting the barks of these trees because they have been burnt you can look up here and that's where i had them sitting right here without any protection and they were they were not happy this is i've only been growing for about five years uh, because i didn't know we could grow them in uh the winter so winter gardening i had no idea about i learned that from youtube gardeners um and i'm grateful for all of that information um so yeah, let's uh, keep spreading the wealth. Show everybody your garden, show off, you know. Be proud of what you've done. I'm proud of all of this. All the hard work I've put into this. It's not all beautiful just yet, but you know, when I get out here and cut the grass that is still here and, and pull some weeds, it's a lot of hard work, but it is well worth it. Cause we're growing fruit, guys. I mean, this is, this is healthy, it's, it's, it's an activity, you're feeding the soil, you're not using chemicals, you're not feeding your family pesticides. That is amazing. And I commend every last one of you for it. So take care, peace.